Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Dave's phase and Dave's phase cleanup phase as we enter the final stretches of the Dave's phase series. So I need to do Bruckner's Eighth Symphony since I just did the Ninth Symphony. And we're moving backwards. This is the last of the Bruckners, by the way. I'm not doing everything by Bruckner. Uh, but the eighth, you got to do. It has a nickname, the Apocalyptic. I don't know who gave it that nickname. I don't know why it has that nickname. It's an incredibly stupid nickname. And most people just ignore it because it's, it's a recent thing. And it just sort of appeared on like record covers or something. It's stupid nonsense. So we're not talking about that. Now, the eighth of course, exists in two versions. The Bruckner people are trying to create more than two versions. They're trying to create interim versions and middle versions and sideways versions and underwater versions. But essentially, so far, they have published two. The first is the original version, which is absolutely dreadful. It is horrible. It has an incredibly stupid coda to the first movement. It has endless repetition in the scherzo, which is maddening. It has some extra cymbal crashes in the, in the slow movement and orchestration that just, that Bruckner cleaned up considerably when he redid it and sounds much cleaner and grander and more sculpted and more colorful and powerful in the revised version. Now, the revised version itself has a couple versions, right? There, traditionally, there were Haas and Novak. Haas has sort of fallen out of favor because Haas sort of sniggled together the two versions and added bits back to the revised version that Bruckner cut that were originally in the original version. But actually, I kind of like those, those additions. He also did a little free composing um, at the bits of the finale, which I don't care about at all, because it works. As long as it works, you know, the ear is the guide. It works. It's fine. And I like the additional material. But most people play Novak, which is strictly the revised edition with the cuts. And they're not serious major cuts. So they don't make all that much difference. It's Maybe better to have some things restored in the finale to balance out the exposition and the recapitulation. But, you know, Bruckner's not about balance at all, so we don't really care. So I go for the revised version, and only unmusical lemmings and morons and Bruckner cookies go for the, the original version. Ha! Gotcha. Now, okay, if you like the original version, what can I say? You like it. I mean... There's no accounting for taste. Anyway, so we're talking about the revised version. It's a thrilling, amazing symphony. It really belongs with the seventh because, because they're actually mirror images of each other. You know, the seventh has two big, long, slowish opening movements, followed by two quick, short concluding movements. And the eighth does just the opposite. It has two quicker, shorter opening movements, followed by two big, long concluding movements. You know, they're, they're, they go together quite well. Anyway, uh, there are many fine performances of the eighth. There really are. I mean, it, it's another symphony that has been lucky on disc. And I, I have to, to pick one is hard because there's just a lot of them that I like. And I like a bunch. There was the Mazel Berlin on EMI, which is fabulous. And then there's the, the Sweetener on Berlin Classics. And there's, there's Gunter Vaughn twice at least, live from Lubeck and afterwards. Um, with a couple of them. There's one with Berlin and there's another one with NDR and he did them every 15 minutes. And then there's 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 Carion's live Vienna one and there's the late Giolini one, which is amazing. I mean, what do you choose? It's a tough one, isn't it? I pick, my pick for Dave's fave, it, faves is the last Carion Vienna. Yes, it is glorious. You know, Carion was doing Vienna at the end of his life because he, he and Berlin had a fight. They had a fight, the clash of titanic egos. And so he left Berlin in a snit, or they got rid of him in an other snit, and started, you know, continuing to do recordings with Vienna. The reason I choose the Carion Eighth is purely sentimental. It's unquestionably one of the great ones, like all of those I've listed. But the sentiment is that I saw him do it at Carnegie Hall. And he was, he was old and he was ill and he could barely walk. And it was a 
thrilling concert. It was one of the great concerts of my life. And even Carrion thought so. Uh, you know, the, the story goes that when he finished it, he just went, wow, <laughs> look at what we did, you know. It was, it was an amazing, amazing concert. Absolutely glorious, which is largely replicated on the recording. You know, quite often you hear something live and then you hear it, you know, on a disc and it doesn't really live up to it. But this eighth does. The performance itself is quite similar to his earlier Berlin eighth and his previous other eighths. Um, you know, Carrion didn't change very much throughout his career. He really didn't. His interpretations remained kind of fixed, and he just closed his eyes and conducted time. And his Bruckner was very Zen-like. That is, rock steady in tempo, graded sort of terraced dynamics, very, very clearly, clearly based on the literal sense of the score. And as a result of that, you know, they're all quite similar, but this last one, well, it's because it's with Vienna, which meant he wasn't able to cow them entirely into Karianizing everything. And, and it's, it's a meeting of minds. It's the beauty of Viennese tone and timbre, um, the gorgeousness of that orchestra, it's lovely horns and beautiful strings, and, but balanced, you know, in a way, because, you know, not, with all the winds missing, as often happens with Karyon's Berlin recordings, or the strange balances that he had in Berlin. No, none of that. It's a live recording, and I think it's a live recording. It doesn't matter. It's a beautiful recording. Absolutely beautiful, and it's, it's wonderful. So that's my choice. The Karyon, the late Karyon Digital Vienna, <sighs> Bruckner 8th. Keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care. Bye-bye.